Hi, welcome back to Shark Tooth Outfitters TV. I'm your host as always, Mike Gemstone. Now we're continuing our Precision Rifle Series Adventure video series, and we're gonna be covering our muzzle brake. We're gonna talk to you about, about muzzle brakes, what they do, and the muzzle brake we've chosen to go on our Howa 1500 competition rifle. Stay tuned. Now, let's talk a little bit about muzzle devices. So the muzzle is the business end of our rifle barrel. Now, it won't take you long if you watch any kind of videos or look at any pictures of competitors in the Precision Rifle Series, all of them, generally without fail, are gonna run some sort of muzzle device. Now, our two broad categories of muzzle devices are gonna be our suppressors, sometimes referred erroneously as silencers, or suppressors, uh, sometimes the guys call them cans on the front. Um, those do help to uh, significantly reduce the um, report of the rifle, the loud bang, uh, if you will, reduces the decibel level that the guns produce um, to a safer level. They don't silence them like they do in the Hollywood movies, that's for sure. Um, so you have the suppressor option. The other option is what we call a muzzle brake. So I decided to go with the muzzle brake, and the muzzle brake actually kind of has the opposite effect. Uh, it makes the gun a little bit louder, but again, in the competition, you're going to be having your ear protection as well as your eye protection on. So the noise isn't much of a factor in that sense, but the value of a muzzle brake is, as the name implies, it helps to slow down the recoil of a rifle. So here I've got a sample muzzle brake. Now this is threaded and this goes on to the threaded end of our barrel and I'm going to show you how we're going to install this in just a moment. Now the physics behind the muzzle brake are pretty simple. Now if you remember from your basic science classes in school, uh, in physics we have a rule, uh, I believe it was Newton, uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So when we fire our rifle as that projectile leaves the barrel, along with all the hot gases streaming out at the end, that force, which is going that way, has an equal and opposite reaction, which pushes the rifle backwards, also known as recoil or kick, and that's what we feel in our shoulders when we fire our weapons. Now, what the muzzle brake helps to do is divert some of those hot gases as they leave the muzzle of the rifle Instead of going straight down range, these 90 degree openings, if you see, that's our, where our bullet is gonna pass through from the barrel, through our muzzle brake. These chambers that are cut through these slots, this is gonna push that gas to the left and to the right. And there's also two ports here at the top drilled into our muzzle brake. None on the bottom, but two on the top. That's gonna direct those gases up and backwards. That's gonna have the effect of reducing the felt recoil that you as the shooter are going to experience, as well as help to stabilize the muzzle and keep you on target after you pull the trigger. Now, that's gonna mean with less recoil that you have an opportunity for quicker follow-up shots, as well as being able to see your impacts downrange. When you're able to see where your bullet is actually hitting, if you're off target especially, you get to see what we call the splash, that kick of dust where your bullet's hitting the ground, not the target. If you know that you're short and to the left, you can quickly make an adjustment. If you can't see where your bullets are hitting because of all the recoil that you're experiencing, you're not going to be able to make those quick adjustments and you're gonna be fumbling around just trying to cycle your action to get your next round even ready to fire. So the muzzle brake can be a very valuable tool. Now, as far as muzzle brakes goes, there's lots of different designs. They all work in a similar fashion, but accomplish their goals in different ways. Different styles of machining, some are bigger, smaller, longer, shorter. 
Um, one thing safety concern wise, again, you need to be mindful of A, these are gonna increase the decibel level of the noise that your rifle is gonna make. And two, you need to make sure that the muzzle brake that you are using is designed for, at the very least, the caliber that you are shooting in your gun. Alternatively, you can use a larger diameter, internal diameter that is, where the bullet's gonna come out. You can use a larger diameter muzzle brake for a smaller caliber. So for instance, I'm using a 30 caliber muzzle brake in my six millimeter Creedmoor, okay? So this is gonna measure 308. My projectile being six millimeter is 0.243 inches. So there's plenty of clearance for that bullet to leave the muzzle. If this was a 243 and I put that on a 30 caliber rifle, that's a bad accident waiting to happen, okay? So always make sure that your muzzle brake is appropriate for the caliber rifle that you're shooting. Now, muzzle brakes range in design and also range in price. Uh, some of the more popular muzzle brakes that you're gonna find the pros are shooting are in the $200 range. Well, we're not the pros just yet. So we're gonna do a little bit of experimentation, keep our budget in mind. What you see in my hand here can easily be found on eBay. I paid $16 for this muzzle brake right here. Now I did do a good bit of research. I tried to use a name brand muzzle brake, or excuse me, I should say buy a new name brand muzzle brake that was used on eBay. I did not win that auction. So I defaulted to this right here. This is brand new, out of the box. Came in the mail, $16, that included shipping. So it was a really good bargain. And in looking at it, uh, looks pretty nicely well machined from one solid piece of billet. And uh, we're gonna give this a try and see if this works. On the one hand, my attitude is, eh, probably can't hurt. It's better than no muzzle brake at all, but that remains to be seen. So as like with anything else you're gonna do when you experiment with your rifle, shoot it with your new accessory, shoot it without that accessory. Try them both out, test them out, and see if you really are getting an improvement in the results. If we find that this thing is not helping us, well, we might ditch it and try something else, okay? Now, one added benefit of a muzzle brake as well, this does have a little bit of weight to it. Um, I guess I haven't weighed it, but it probably weighs maybe six ounces, maybe eight ounces at most, uh, if that. But what this does is gonna add a little bit of extra weight towards our muzzle. Um, it's not a significant amount with such a heavy barrel that's really gonna change um, my balance point on my rifle, where that's gonna sit, um, but it certainly can't hurt to have a little bit of extra weight on the front. And in my prior video, we talked about we wanted to add some weight to our rifle anyways um, to, to get some poundage on here to, again, help reduce the recoil and help us stay a little more steady and on target. So we're going to switch to a close-up view, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to install this muzzle brake, and we'll talk a little bit about your options as far as do-it-yourself for mounting your muzzle brake, or you may need to see, again, a competent gunsmith to do a real proper uh, attachment if you so choose to do so. Stay with me, we'll get to our close-up right now. Okay, now we've got a close-up of our muzzle. Now I've added this white sheet of paper here so you can see a couple things in a little more detail. So we have our muzzle brake. Again, to give you a close-up of that, we have our three ports on either side, and this is gonna be at the top. Now, I'm gonna remove the thread protector and expose the threaded end of our six millimeter Creedmoor barrel. Now, when you install a brake, again, there's several different designs of brakes, but again, normally a muzzle wants to rise when the shot is fired. This particular brake has these two ports drilled in the top that's gonna help push some of the gas up and keep our muzzle downward. So we have to make sure we properly index, that's a key word there, we properly index our muzzle brake so that these two holes are pointing directly up perpendicular to our barrel. Again, just like we would level our scope, which we'll talk about later, we want these to be perfectly level across the top of our receiver pointing upward. So if I screw this on, 
we're gonna see, sometimes you can get lucky with these. In this case, we're not. As you can see right here, our holes are actually pointing downward. Right now, my rifle's laying on its side. I need them to be 180 degrees in the opposite direction. So, normally, if you had a gunsmith do this operation, they would remove this muzzle brake and they would slowly start to remove material from the face of the brake right here where my finger is, where it meets the barrel. So they would machine that down bit by bit till they could get this so it would screw on a little bit more each time until it was properly indexed. And that's a fine skill and not cheap. So muzzle brakes these days, some of them you will find the higher dollar ones are self-indexing, meaning that there is a nut that is attached to the muzzle brake that is able to twist and turn independently from the brake. That allows the brake to be positioned properly and that nut to be tightened accordingly so that it's safely secured to the barrel and properly indexed without the need of a gunsmith. Now that's great because then you can quickly change your muzzle device if you choose to do so, even in the field if necessary. Now, this particular muzzle brake we got came with a jam nut. So this is a threaded nut that can be used to, similar to with the self-indexing brakes, make our adjustment for us to properly secure that brake and properly index it. And or this is what's called a crush washer. So this washer is gonna act like a shim and give us our proper spacing. So we try in different fashions of how we can get this together. Now, I'm gonna admit, I cheated a little bit. I did test this out before I started shooting the video. And I was able to find that with this crush washer, I can get my brake almost perfectly indexed. So I'm gonna twist this on. And when I go to line this up, I'm off by maybe 10 degrees. But this is just finger tight. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna get myself a tool that's gonna not mar or mess up or gall my metal on my brake. And I'm gonna get a little bit of torque on that thing and get some, uh, some poundage so I can get it indexed just right. All right, now I've gone ahead and adjusted my camera angle so you can see a little bit closer what we're doing to properly index our brake. So here again, we have our crush washer. And I wanna show you a quick test fit again of the brake. So we'll screw this on. And I want to have my brake index so that the ports that are on top, the two drill holes, are straight up and down, that is perpendicular to our bore. This will ensure that that helps to push that muzzle downward and fight the normal upward movement from our shot. It also ensures that the ports located on either side of the brake are pointed in the proper directions as well to give us our best recoil reduction and muzzle control. Now, when I index this loosely and just get it to finger tight, I'm almost where I need to be perfectly. I think once I put my tool on here and tighten this up, that's going to get me right where I need to be and it'll crush that washer, as the name implies, a crush washer. It'll crush that washer down just enough to get that where I want it. Now, before I snug this up, I am going to add some thread locking compound to help ensure that this does not come off in the middle of a match. I would not recommend using a permanent solution. Uh, instead, get yourself some removable thread locker. That way you can take this off in the future for cleaning, replacement, etc. in the future. All right, now that I have my thread locker on, I've got my brake hand tight. Again, here's our thread locker from our uh, Wheeler scope mounting kit. Uh, that's again, the removable formula. I'm gonna use this tool. So I looked around and I have uh, this uh, old set of wire cutters and this handle is just about the perfect size to go through my ports. And it's also got rubber on there to help me from marring up my muzzle brake, okay? 
Um, I'm gonna try to hold the barrel with my hand. If you really needed to screw this down, you would wanna use a barrel vise, but you wanna be careful. You do not wanna damage the threads on the end of your barrel. That is not gonna be a quick and easy fix. And again, we wanna make sure we take care of that crown. So let's see if we can't get this turned over a few more degrees and get this uh, situated just right. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert this in the farthest port. Get it to go in there, perfect fit. And I'm gonna take the barrel and let's see if we can't just put a little bit of torque on there. Really not actually, I haven't turned that hard. Feel that crush washer go down just a little bit. Let me check it out. And folks, I think that little bit got us done. So we lucked out, we got that indexed uh, pretty easily. It didn't take a lot of force. I did hear my crush washer uh, detent a little bit and with my thread locker on there, I think we're good to go.